If you can recall life before the internet, you understand how monumental the creation of the World Wide Web was. In just a generation, your digital presence become more significant than your physical one with your online reputation being crucial. However, about 8 years ago, some began to claim that the internet died. This idea is central to the so-called dead internet theory. Initially, it seemed absurd, but I've become a believer. Most discussions about this theory trace back to a thread on the Agra Roads Macintosh Cafe forum from January 2021 written by several anonymous users. This thread, filled with anecdotes, conspiracies, and offensive language typical of 4chan, suggests that the internet died around 2016. The most extreme claims is that the US government issues AI-powered bots to manipulate the entire world population. While it's hard to prove the wildest assertions, many now feel undeniably true. The internet does seem empty, lifeless, and devoid of new content. Although the internet appears vast, it feels hollow like a hot air balloon with nothing inside. This originator of a well-known conspiracy theory doesn't seem so far-fetched anymore, it was just ahead of its time. If it had been written after the surge of generative AI, it might have been seen as a significant culture insight. Although a global Illuminati-style manipulation campaign still seems unlikely, evidence that the internet has slipped out of the human control is widespread. Simply put, most website visitors are not human. In 2016, security firm Imperva reported that bots accounted for over half of all web traffic and a third of visits to any website were likely from malicious attack bots. GitHub revealed that AI assists programmers in writing up to 30% of their code and Cybra estimated that before Elon Musk took over 11 to 33% of Twitter accounts were bots, producing a disproportionate amount of content. YouTube engineers coined the term the inversion to describe the point at which fake views would outnumber real ones. Google is concerned that its revolutionary search algorithm might become overwhelmed by AI-generated content and lose its effectiveness. Examples of these takeovers are already evident on platforms like Facebook, where bizarre images like crustacean like Jesus Christ go viral, generating hundreds of millions of engagements. The comments on such posts offer little hope for reviving the internet. The internet was already in decline before the release of ChatGPT. Algorithmic feeds, which prioritize content based on engagement, have led to an abundance of worthless content optimized in absurd ways. This problem extends beyond social media, with bots infiltrating other areas. You can buy AI-generated poetry, watch films written by AI, listen to podcasts featuring dead celebrities, read news reported by neural networks, and see the first AI-generated music videos. Generative AI like ChatGPT is the reason why if the internet isn't already devoid of people, it soon will be. It creates a blurry landscape of AI in human interaction. Obvious fakes like Shrimp Jesus are easy to spot, but more sophisticated manipulated content fools millions and set trends. Malicious AI creations force platforms and government to act. Entirely fake subreddits can be created with every post, comment, and reply generated by AI. AI can produce infinite music without any human creativity, exemplified by a live stream of generative heavy metal music playing non-stop since 2019. Even jobs like Instagram influencing are easy to fake. If any of these recent phenomena still seem recognizable to you, they soon won't be. The public release of ChatGPT was a watershed moment and not a positive one. Its rapid adoption created significant economic incentives for all knowledge-based industries to incorporate generative AI, accelerating the technology and enabling anyone to create vast amounts of lifeless digital content for almost nothing. According to Timothy Shoup of the Copenhagen Institute for Future Studies, in a scenario where ChatGPT becomes widespread, the internet would be unrecognizable. He predicts that by 2025, 99 to 99.9% .9 of online content might be AI-generated. Unfortunately, we are already living in this scenario. The internet didn't die because people were fooled by manipulated media. That has always been the case. 
It died because synthetic media, like that created by ChatGPT, Midjourney, and others, can emulate human creativity on a scale and scope impossible for humans to compete with or sift through. After its initial release, ChatGPT was generating more synthetic text every two weeks than the total content of all physical books ever written. This has had a tremendous impact on the knowledge work landscape. We've already witnessed a surge in synthetic media that targets the most vulnerable among us. This technology, driven by significant economic incentives, is rapidly improving and becoming harder to distinguish from reality. It will soon reach a point where even close friends and family won't be able to tell the difference between a real person and their synthetic counterpart. This is exemplified by Scarlett Johansson, who famously voiced an AI in the movie Her. She had to take legal actions against OpenAI, the developer of ChatGPT, after they used a simulation of her voice in their 4.0 model without her consent. The internet has become wilderness of bots, human-like techs, deep fakes, and malicious actors. Many have retreated to closed platforms like Discord, Slack, Substack, podcasts, and newsletters, seeking refugee from the dark, terror-filled digital landscape. The internet once envisioned as means to connect to the world and foster a more interconnected society has been warped by a hyper-capitalist tech environment. This shift has led to the dominance of social media companies and the rise of algorithmically optimized content resulting in a flood of AI-generated garbage. The loss of the internet to bots and synthetic media possess a serious epistemological threat. As Nashi K writes in Deep Fakes, the coming apocalypse, this mirrors an old Russian disinformation tactic, flooding the information ecosystem not just with false information, but with excessive information in general. When there is too much noise, people start to tune out, trusting media less and less as sifting through it becomes more cognitively demanding. This disengagement from the democratic process leads to a turn towards strongmen, conspiracy theories, and a distrust of expertise and authority. Generative AI has exacerbated this issue independently, enabling bad actors to manipulate large groups of people more easily than ever before. It feels like the internet is not just dead but also dangerous. That's because it is. According to a report from a Europol Innovation Lab, threat actors are using disinformation campaigns and deep fake content to misinform the public about events, influence politics and elections, commit fraud, and manipulate shareholders. Many organizations now see deep fakes as an even bigger potential risk than identity theft. A dead internet facilitates harassment, extortion, non-consensual pornography, market disruption, and political unrest. Efforts to regulate the creation and use of generative AI are lagging far behind the technology's adoption and expression. We must consider whether we need an international agency to handle these issues, new privacy laws, or technology that can identify bots and deep fakes as quickly as they are generated. Is AI generated art real art? Is synthetic music real music? Are there any humans left online? In the next 10 years, generating content at scale will be even easier, and the systems we build to navigate this content will create a completely different internet. The human version of the web, the one we grew up with, is dead. We are at a historical turning point, much like the advent of nuclear weapons. Both technologies change the world instantly, method who developed them, were tested without public consent, face extreme criticism, saw slow or ineffective regulations, concentrated power in the hands of a few, rendered previous technologies obsolete, and have the power to obliterate entire populations, whether physical or digital. Generative AI is the nuclear bomb of the information age. The internet may not be dead in the way the original conspiracy theory claimed, but it has undoubtedly changed for the worse. It no longer feels as fun, creative, connecting, or endlessly interesting. Generative AI has spot a convincing imitation of human intelligence and poisoned the well. How we purify it? I don't know. Rapid scale government regulation feels heavy handed but necessary. Historically, there have been few effective ways to combat massive economic incentives like those driving generative AI. This is another warning from someone who lives in the internet and can see its headstone from here. Until next time.